With the recent bridge disaster in Baltimore, I'm sure you're shortly going to be hearing about the defense priority allocation system and how it might be used to accelerate the rebuild of that bridge. I thought I would share with you the current situation with the transformers up in the electrical grid, as that has a good analogy. And while you're at it, you'll learn a thing about a shortfall we have in our electrical grid and what may and may not be able to help with the rebuilding of the bridge. Because in my experience, going back to COVID and when it was talked about with respirators, the media got it mostly wrong. And as a guy who worked in the Defense Department, I will share it towards the end of this video on what actually happens. The subject has come up again with the production of electrical transformers for our electrical grid, which it turns out is a large and continuing issue. Turns out that one item that's in short supply for the US electrical grid are transformers. This is laid out in a 2020 report of the state of transformer supply in the US. Key reasons are the particular type of steel, which is largely imported, and the transformers manufacturer themselves, which also has a significant import requirement. This, I should add right up front, is not a new issue. It has to do much more with the industrial base moving overseas and the lack of US sources. As a result, prices have more than doubled in the past two years with no signs of dropping back down. Plus, there are new efficiency rules about to go into effect. So transformers turn out to be a huge bottleneck for the U.S., in particular for grid reliability. And this is before we even get into expansion plans that will be required for EVs, wind, and solar. The average transformer in the country is well past its design life of 20 years. Hence the idea to use DPASS. Unfortunately, there's a disconnect between what DPES does versus it, the perception. Since I have first-hand experience with this, let me go over what it helps with and what it does not. The helpful part derives from boosting the order in which parts are processed. So if a U.S. manufacturer is behind schedule, the DPES order should be processed before a foreign order or a commercial order. Sounds great, right? The trick is that there's no requirement to process the order quicker if it's planned to meet its original delivery schedule. In that instance, the U.S. order can be processed second. And since U.S. manufacturers primarily serve the U.S. market and not overseas, there's not a lot of cases where it's going to make a significant benefit. Prioritizing a transformer for a DPAS order versus a utility that is a non-DPAS order might actually be counterproductive it's also likely to be the rare case. Contractors taking an order with a DPAS requirement know all of this and account for that in pricing and schedules at the time of award. Then there's also the question of enforcement. That is very rare. Having it on contract can be a helpful carrot. Enforcement is something that is not likely to actually happen in practice if the contractor is just not going to play ball. Allow me to share a personal example. As part of a contractor evaluation team, my assignment was to determine the effectiveness of a large aircraft manufacturer's production process some years back. When doing so, I found when inspecting the paint shop that separate from the computer schedules listing the order of processing, expediters would come into the shop, place flags next to the part they wanted, complete it before all others. And this included some airliner parts being processed ahead of late defense orders, a violation which I duly noted. To be fair, in this case, company leadership did not know this was going on. They were, in fact, so confident that they challenged me to find this problem outside the paint area. Challenge was accepted, and my finding was actually expanded due to finding another issue in a different department. In that department, their DPAS order was coded DX, which is the highest priority, and only given to select programs. DX orders are such a high priority that it does not make a big difference that a contractor has a DPAS order unless it is a DX rating, in which case it's a very big deal. It might surprise you to learn that when I was leaving the Air Force, this company actually offered me a job. They could not fix a problem that management was ignorant of, I suppose. Of course, management had one lesson I'm not sure they learned, which was the need to get out of the office and see how real life differs from what is reported. But I digress. This example is unlikely to be repeated, 
for transformers, even in a defense department situation as a whole. Most transformers are not running alongside large volumes of commercial parts. And with the consolidation of the defense industrial base, this also, also happens a lot less than in the past. The law originated in the 1950s, and even with updates, it's targeting a different industrial environment than exists today. Adding it to transformers or respirators is helpful to thin out those cases where a D-pass order is going to get bumped by a higher profit competing order if it's late. So that's a good thing. And how it flows down to steel manufacturers, I'd be interested to see. Uh, that would definitely be interesting. But in most instances, the impact is going to be slight and it does nothing to address the cost issue associated with transformers. As always, let me know what you think and have a great day.